All right, good morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone. Today, I'm going to be featuring the new Tier 10 Tech Tree Light Cruiser, the San Martin. It is going to be available for free in, I believe, three patches or so. Um, of course, it's a Tech Tree, so it'll be available in the Pan America line. So these are all the ships from Tier 1 to Tier 10, and I believe this is the first um, Pan American line in the game. So here we are. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it looks similar to a Worcester in terms of its hull design. And we'll talk about, of course, the, the differences and stuff to Worcester. It is quite different to Worcester, but also quite similar in some other ways. Um, but yeah, this is San Martin. So before we get into review, the review, guys, if you do enjoy my content and you enjoy my channel and you seem to stumble on my channel a lot, I would appreciate this a subscription to my channel. It'll help me out a lot. Um, but otherwise, I think we should start off with the armor layout for the San Martin. Of course, before that, it will be available before for like uh, early access thing, like every other tech tree line or whatever. But I don't recommend you take part in the early access things because you can get it for free in two, two to three patches. So I'm sure you could just wait for for that, of course. But anyway, um, let us take a look at our armor layout first. Um, we have 25mm nose armor, 25mm side armor, 25mm aft, and we have a 30mm deck, so similar to Worcester. And if we take off all the armor, just take a look at the Citadel. As you can see, it sits pretty high. Not too high, but still sits pretty high, so you must be careful when you're playing the San Martin. Um, you shouldn't be, like, suicidal or something, so do be careful with it. Um, for my commander build, I'm going to be running Last Stand, Incoming Fire Alert, um, Consumables Enhancements, Adrenaline Rush, Concealment Expert, Superintendent, Survivability Expert, and Radio Location. Um, for my equipment, I'm running Main Battery Mod 3, Concealment System Mod 1, Prop Mod 1, Aiming System Mod 1, Surveillance Radar Mod 1, and Main Armaments Mod 1. And for the Camouflage, the premium camo you'll have available for the San Martin, if you do want to buy it, of course, for 200 doubloons. This is the normal, this is without the camo, and uh, the camo is just like, I believe it's actually the same as this. <laughs> oh my god, no way, dude, look. The design, dude. Okay, well, it's not too unique, to be honest, but there you go. <laughs> you, instead of buying the perma camo, you can just spend 45,000 on this. Or you can just not put a camo at all. It's up to you, really. I actually prefer these ones, um, which, which look like this. But, uh, yeah, sure. Um, but, uh, so, I'm going to cover the ship characteristics now. Um, so, if you want to skip to the game, I'll keep the video chaptered, so you can just skip straight away. But I will take a look at the ship characteristics right now, so I don't have to talk about them during the match itself. Um, so for survivability, we have 54,300 HP and a 7% torpedo protection damage reduction. For artillery, for main guns, we have 5.3 second reload. Um, we have 15.5 kilometer gun range. I believe these shells do go faster than Wooster. I want to actually bring up the Wooster so we can compare the two. Um, eh, where is it? Here it is. Oh, actually, I don't have a captain on Wooster, but Wooster has more range. Um, it has less HP, of course, but... I'll just put this on really quick. Okay, so yeah, Wooster has less HP by around 5,000, but Wooster also has more gun range. Um, the shells are faster on the San Martin to target, of course. Their initial velocity is faster, and I think they retain their speed a bit better as well. Um, but then again, you do only have, I believe, how much is this actually? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times 2. You have 10 guns on the uh, San Martin. I believe you have 12 guns on the Wooster. So you do have less guns. On the San Martin, but most importantly, you're gonna see here the main difference would be the AP only. You only have AP on the San Martin. Of course, your reload is significantly also worse <laughs> by 1.3 seconds to Wooster, which to me is quite surprising actually, um, especially since you're AP only. The AP doesn't have improved characteristics, um, so it's it doesn't have, I believe, improved pen, and it also um, doesn't have crazy fuse time like for example minotaur so you're gonna tend to over pen destroyers quite a fair amount so you have to be careful about that um torpedoes you do actually get torps on the san martin unlike wooster you get fletcher torps i believe 10.5 kilometer range uh, 66 knots 17,000 damage 1.3 detection um airstrike you do have air base asw just like wooster 4.9k damage 8k m range a defense 85 rated um I don't think it's any good unless you slot in the DFA. 
Um, the thing with booster, you have DFA and a separate slot to Hydro, so you can pretty much have that the entire time, which is super nice. Problem with San Martin is Wargaming decided to put it in the same slot as Hydro, so you're gonna have to make that decision yourself. Same thing with Spotter Plane here, which kind of sucks, because in the original design, the Spotter Plane was in a different slot of the radar, therefore you would run both all the time, and your range issue wasn't too much of an issue, to be honest. But now, um, we have to actually pick... Uh, we actually have to pick between Radar and uh, Spotter Plane. And for the most part, I think picking Radar is more useful for your team than actually picking a Spotter Plane. But at the end of the day, the choice is up to you. And this ship will go 36 knots, which is slightly faster than Wooster um, by one knot. It does have a worse turning circle radius. And it also has a way worse rudder shift time by around 3 seconds. Uh, for your concealment, you have 9.1 detection, which I believe is 0 0.6, 0 0.7 kilometers better than Wooster. So you're pretty much, your radar is almost one-to-one -one in the San Martin, which I would say is pretty cool. But like I said, the lack of HE is going to make it really hard for you to punish those destroyers who are in your radar range. The radar range is still 9 kilometers, but your radar lasts less than Wooster's radar um, by around 15 seconds. Um, your heal is actually a super heal, I believe, which is super nice. Um, you have 1,000 damage per tick. I think that's almost like a 20,000 HP heal, so it's better than Wooster's. And your Hydro is short-range Hydro Search. And therefore, it's not the long-range 5km Hydro Wooster has. It's a 3km Hydro. One more thing I want to mention about the San Martin before we get into the game is consumables operation readiness here. This is basically like an F key for Tier 11s. Um, for the battleship specifically, you're going to be shooting the enemies all the time. And of course, um, when... <laughs> sorry, you're going to be shooting the enemies when you get the full buff, basically, of the thing. You can click the F button and your consumables will reload 85% quicker. So normally you want to do this when, for example, you get it, then you heal, and then you click the F key. Uh, well, after your heal is done... So the cooldown gets reduced, and you get another heal straight away, and you can stack heals very quickly. Um, that's why I actually went Superintendent, even though we have 5 heals, we're going to be using them quite a lot this, in, in this ship, because the cooldown is going to be very quick. Um, if you don't make use of the F key, by the way, um, your cooldown on the consumables is huge, 171 seconds. So you do have to keep that in mind. The DCP is a normal cooldown, but the rest you have to wait a really long time. So if you're not able to get your F key to work, you're going to have to wait 10 years. But I think we should go into our game in the San Martin. All right, so here we are on north in the San Martin. Um, I am... Okay, we spawned the... Uh, west? No, no, east. <laughs> east, hello. Hello, Maltese Knights. Uh, so yeah, I'll go this way um, for sure. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll skip this part, I guess. But something to note is, this ship is an Argentinian ship. There are, of course, other nations throughout the tiers. I believe there's Colombian, there is a Peruvian, there's Argentinian, this one, and there's also a Mexican ship. I don't know if I'm missing any. But yeah, th those are the ships so far um, that we have. But yeah, let's go to the left here, and I will skip till the so for the action to happen or something. I don't know. All right, we see something, but we're gonna have to game return before we start opening up because there is a Napoli in the smoke screen. I don't want to get dev struck. Four over pen, GG dude. See, Minotaur would have gotten pens, for example, obviously, but because of its improved fuse characteristics. But with this one, we're only going to be getting over pens on broadside destroyers, which kind of sucks. Well, it doesn't kind of suck; it really sucks, <laughs> to be honest. Um, to fighting destroyers. Because, um, for example, something like a Wooster would just get pens with HE. Something like a Minotaur would just get pens with a AP. This one will just get uh, <laughs> over pens with AP. So, it's a bit sad. Quite a lot sad, actually. Really sad. Really sad moments. Um, let's go for the Napoli. Shell ta travel time is pretty fast. I actually quite like the fact that it had spotter plane and radar in two different slots. I'm quite sad that Wargaming decided to not allow us to have th that, I guess. I don't think I live here. I think I die to one Torp, guys. Or not, I somehow dodge because they're very slow regular Torps. We probably should have Hydro 10 years ago, but we chose not to because we're trolling, I guess. I don't know. Regolo does open up because he's confident I'm not going to do any damage to him, I think. 
We'll try our best to actually do some damage. We got some pens because he is slightly angled, which means our shells are going to be able to pen. Um, the problem would be when he actually ends up going broadside. Well, we're also getting over pens now. Okay, he's going really fast. He has a speed boost on. So we're not going to be able to hit him too well. And as you can see, by the way, with the F key, it goes, like, time of inactivity before progress loss is only 15 seconds, by the way. So, um, if you're not shooting for around, like, 15 seconds on someone, um, you're going to be losing that very quickly, okay? So, just keep that in mind. Um, there's nothing on this flank, really, so I'm going to pretty much rotate to somewhere else, because I'm literally AFK doing nothing here. Okay, we should be able to get, like, a quick shot or two on the Annapolis, maybe? Let's see. Four point eight K, wow, crazy. Two K, not bad. That's all we're gonna get on him. The Vermont just shot us. We might actually just die, guys. But we'll see. He does overmatch my thirty millimeter deck. Um, but I think he missed. I think he shot behind me, so I think we're okay. Yeah, okay, let's keep rotating. We wanna get to the four line if we actually wanna play the game, so. Alright, we have crossed the map. We are able to play World of Warships again. Um, so, I think we should be able to, theoretically you now, uh, get this F key bounce in here. Because all we need to get is shell hits and the Duncan's bow in. So, I think we're gonna be able to farm some shell hits on him. But we'll try. Unless we kill him too quickly, of course. I don't think we're gonna be able to kill him too quickly. So, I think we'll be actually able to get our F key straight off him. <laughs> Okay, now we're gonna heal, and after we're done healing, we're literally gonna pop our um, consumable, so we get a quicker reload on our consumables. Problema resuelto, senor. Problema resuelto, senor. Okay, let's output some damage on the Illinois here. So our heal is going to be over, and now we're gonna F key that, which means we get the heal cooldown. What's nice about the tier 10 compared to the tier 8, I was playing the Ignacio on stream recently, I'm sure some of you were watching the stream, um, is the Ignacio doesn't uh, get the heal cooldown inside the F key or whatever, this one does, which means if you F key you'll guaranteed get the cooldown, so you don't have to wait extra seconds over it, which is nice. Got a Hydro here, should be able to kill the Bondi. Thing is, there's not much to do this game. There's a lot of ships on the enemy team that are just AFK. We are losing somehow. But I think we should be able to claw it back slowly, slowly. Problem I'm seeing is how are we going to kill a Napoli, you know? It's going to be really hard. Especially with any <laughs> AP only cruiser, you know what I mean? I don't think I can arc this rock. I'm going to try. I'm also going to heal straight away here. Fuck, I really needed the shell hits there so I can get my heal cooldown quicker, but it's okay. Um, I think maybe we can go farm the pot 3. Now it'll take us a while because it's AP only, but um, we can try. We can try. So let's cross the map again. Alright, we have the possibility of farming a Salem, guys. Which could be good, but he's angling to my AP. So it's going to be pretty miserable overall to shoot him. But... Uh, <laughs> This is it, right? That's an AP focused cruiser, guys. Without uh, improved characteristics on the AP. So this is what I don't like about this ship, to be honest. One of my major, I think, downsides of it being AP only. I wish it had HE. I think with HE it would actually be a pretty reasonable ship to play. But the fact that it doesn't have HE is just super, super sad, to be honest. And you can like argue about HE spam all you want, but I mean, having AP only without Minotaur style AP really sucks to be honest especially for a cruiser um, even for fighting destroyers is gonna be a pretty miserable time overall so I don't really see I don't know I, I really don't have fun playing this ship overall I would say um, I will be playing it more and more and more and more of course um, on stream and stuff when it does actually come out because I'm not gonna pre-purchase it or whatever this is my press account I'm playing it on right now but even playing the Ignacio, overall, it's pretty miserable. Um, some games are actually pretty good in the Ignacio, because I really like when I can grab those heals really quickly. It can be 
It can be actually really useful to get those heals really quickly on something like this, because you can pretty much sustain damage for quite a long time. But in terms of your output, it's more like a defensive ship. I don't know how to explain it too well, but um, for defense, it's actually not too bad just because of that um, quick heal cooldown and stuff. But for your offensive capabilities, uh, well, you're kind of getting shredded on your offensive capabilities um, because your guns aren't doing as much damage as, for example, you'd want them to, right? So, like, for example, if we had HE, we would be setting fires. We would be outputting some damage with that fire, etc. But yeah, I mean, just something I wanted to mention, I guess. That's partly the reason why I would prefer playing Wooster overall um, over the Sun Martin. Even a Minotaur, for example, over the Sun Martin. Um, just because of kind of the, those things. I guess you can say it's kind of a mix of both of those things. It's tankier than a Wooster, of course. It's tankier than a Minotaur, sure. But then again, I mean, the, the damage output is significantly like reduced, right? To make up for those things. see how much we can do to this Dalarna here. Probably not too much, but... The Dalarna, it's six kilometers, guys. Seven kilometers, right? So... Shouldn't be too hard to, like, do some damage, right? And a cruiser to it. But, um, we'll see. We got Confederate. Not too bad. If only we had Halsey. 6k there. That's because he's angled, so we end up getting pens, which is super nice. 2.8k. Remember, with HE, of course, we're getting pens the entire time. Minotaur, we're getting pens the entire time. Here, we should be able to kill him quite easily, to be fair. We're gonna FK so we can get our heal off again, get a Hydro off so we know if his torps are coming. That's the nice thing about the FK, guys. That's a super nice thing, because it's easy to proc, right? But not just easy to proc, it's also just very useful to have um, quick consumable reload, I guess, right? For utility, I guess it could be pretty useful. <coughs> but that's pretty much it, right, overall. I would say the consumables definitely its gimmick. It definitely trades its damage output for its gimmick of consumables and stuff. I don't know if I make this. Uh, I'll only take one, I guess. Yep, we take one, but I don't think we die. The problem is I don't think I get to the cap in time to do anything. <laughs> we'll try. I'll try to speedrun there, but I think the Paolo is going to just... Or the Regolo is just going to cap it out and we'll lose the game. But it's okay. I'll try feature a second game for the video. See if we get a different result. Okay, we actually got to the cap in time. Let's see if we can reset the Regolo, because he has all the reset points. He does. Um, we should be able to not kill him, but we should be able to actually output some damage to him. Get those resets in. Give our team a chance. Because the thing is, our Yamagiri is capping, right? So, if... Oh, I'm going to take a Torp. If he can cap it out, we still have a chance at winning the game. The problem is they have two in the cap. Now they're gonna have three with Vermont. We don't actually end up killing the guy. Because we wanted to reset Napoli as well. It's okay. Let's go Brota, get some Torps off, I guess. Oh, or sorry. They're in capped. Lamau, funny. So, GG. Alright, GG. Um, so, the Ismo ended up, or the Iwami ended up uh, contesting the cap, so we couldn't really cap out. And they just capped out with three ships, so we automatically lost. But um, 157k damage, 415 shell hits, 5 defended, 2 kills, a confederate, um, 4 team score. We ended up getting top of the team with 1.6k base XP on a loss, so not too bad overall. Detailed report, we did 19k to the Dalarna, 10k to the Duncan, 33k to the Patri, 23k to the Regolo. And then some chip damage on pretty much everything else, really. Um, damage received, 127,000 damage. Not too bad. And for credits and XP, here you go. Um, but I think we should go into our second game in the San Martin. Alright, so here we are in the San Martin on Sleeping Giant, our second game. Um, we should go... Hmm. I mean, we spawned out wide, which kind of sucks. But if Hayati provides smokescreen for us, it could be really useful. The problem is, will he? Hayati will ask. Will you be able to smoke me closer in? Question mark. Alright. But yeah, let's skip till something happens, I guess. Okay, Hayati actually set a smoke for us, which is super nice. 
Problem is the CV came right at the right moment and sadly I don't have DFA so my A is completely useless. It's basically as bad as a tier 1 I think. Or at least it feels like it. But well, I'm gonna be complimenting our Hayate. Thank you for the smoke. I am Radar, that's fine, it's probably small on. There's a lot of TDs here, guys. There's three destroyers, but small on radar shouldn't last too long, to be honest. So I think we're gonna be ready to be okay. We're gonna take some damage, of course, from that Vermont. But I don't think we'll end up dying. Our radar will run out in nine seconds. I think we're gonna be okay. This is definitely a position of all time, for sure. <laughs> Smoke will last 50 more seconds, so not too bad overall. I don't know. Damage output is overall pretty miserable, guys. I don't know how to explain it to you, but I think I've told it to you a hundred times. It is a miserable damage output overall. Um, that's, that's, I mean, that's clearly not the strength of the ship, right? Which kind of sucks, because it is a cruiser, and you would think, like, maybe damage output would be one of its main strengths. But, um, no, it's, it's defensive capabilities, definitely. Um, but, it's kind of sad, you know? Because I like when I have big damage outputs, but it's okay. Okay, so there is a Hindenburg. So we're gonna try output some damage on him. Oh, he's instantly dark. Happens, I guess. Happens. Happens. Montana is HE loaded, so we're chilling. Okay, he one shot me with HE. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad. We're gonna heal, so then we get our F key. I think we're gonna be able to get our FK relatively easily here. The carrier's coming for me. No, he's not lucky. Lucky, lucky me. I'm lucky. I don't get hit by the CV. We're gonna get our FK outputted here, which is super nice. That means we're going to be able to heal again very quickly. We're also gonna get our radar back. We're also gonna get our hydro back. We're also gonna get our DCP back really quickly. So that's kind of like the cool thing, I guess. That is pretty cool, the fact that you can get heals very quick, radars very quick, and hydros very quick. But then again, I mean... The damage, bro, the damage, where is it, you know? Where is the damage? Sad face. You could call me a loser HE spammer all you want, guys, but at the end of the day, like... It's pretty cool to do some damage, you know, overall. And it's not like the damage on this thing is unplayable. It's definitely not unplayable. It's definitely playable. It's just compared to the rest of the competition it has, such as Minotaur and Wooster, it's obviously just worse. And I have to make that point clear because, well, I don't know. You'd think these light cruisers have really good DPM, etc. So they're going to output a lot of damage. That's, you know, what they trade for being squishy, I guess. But, like I said, this one isn't going to be outputting giga damage like the rest. But, on the other hand, you also have the ability to live longer. I feel like I've said this a hundred times. I'm boring you guys to that. So maybe we should just change something. Talk about something else about the ship, I guess. I don't know. Maybe the 3km hydro it has. Which, I mean, it's okay at, at best, I guess. It's not like a giga hydro or anything. But, at least it is a hydro. At least you don't not have hydro, you know. For example, like a Jinan or something. Um, the Vermont is pre-kited at 18 kilometers, which is super unfortunate for us because we only have 15 kilometers of range. Something you guys can do if you want on the San Martin is take spotter plane instead of radar. Now, that's really up to you at the end of the day if you want to do that. I personally don't think it's a good idea because, well, <laughs> you're losing out utility, which you could be providing to the team, especially with the quick cooldown radar. Um, it could actually be useful. The nice thing with the spotter plane is you can get a quick cooldown spotter plane, of course. Um, just because of that uh, consumable reload thing. But, I mean, trading out a radar for that, I don't I don't think it's a wonderful idea, to be honest. But at the end of the day, like I said, the choice is going to be yours. And you can play the ship however you want to play it. 
Um, even if you want to change the build, etc. You can do whatever the fuck you want, right? Because it's your game, etc. But this is what I'm saying about the radar, because I think the, the the radar can actually be quite useful. Speaking of which... Thank you for the smoke, Hayati again. I really like this Hayati. He's helping us out quite a fair amount. I'm actually gonna use this consumable thing because I want my heal very quickly because we're gonna need it against the Venezia. Okay, or we just not shoot ever again in my life because I just got one shot by a Montana because I went broadside to his. Um, I think we should be able to still shoot dark here. Yeah, we are. Heal in five seconds. We're gonna be able to heal pretty much all of it, which is super nice. I believe the heal for sit damage is super high. I guess in your percentage of Citadel healable damage or whatever. Normally it's around how much? Like 50 or none or something. But this one is actually quite high, so it's super nice. I think we just have to sit on the corner and wait for the Venice to like rush us or something. And then twerp it out. Or maybe he hope maybe he thinks I don't have twerps and he comes around the corner. These are all unlikely things, right? But I don't see how else we're gonna kill him. He actually just torped on that side. But he's proxy spotting me, so... Oh, Vermont's in range! Vermont's in range, guys! For the first time this game, let's go! I'll put some damage on him. Venets is saying hi to us. I'm not gonna say hi, because I'm actually able to play the game. Vermont got citadeled. Now he's gonna turn off the screen, because he got citadeled once. He's like, oh my god, I'm too close! On the B-line. Look where Haaland is, by the way, guys! He's on the A line, guys. Holy gamer. He's smashing their team from behind. It's true, though. Kill the Venezia. It's cool. I'm actually gonna use my F key because I want a heal. Venezia said GG noob team. After saying hi. It's okay. We're gonna gamer turn here. Hopefully, not die instantly to the Montana. We're gonna try output some Torps. I've, I think the, the word of this video is output, guys. What do you guys think? We killed the St. Vincent. Now we're gonna try kill the, the Montana. And you can play like a cowboy in this thing. Like a proper like red player. Because the thing is, if you get your consumable thing, your heals are gonna come up really quickly. At the end of the day, though, you're still a cruiser. You shouldn't be showing broadside like I have been doing this entire game. Because you're gonna get dev struck. And getting dev struck is not a good idea. Because, well, if you get dev struck, you die in game. And if you die in game, you'll be stressed in real life. And stress in real life could lead to potential issues later on in life. So try to not show full broadside, guys, in your San Martin. Because even though it might not seem like a big deal, it could be a big deal for for future generations even. Um, you know, potentially. If we're going to look at the long-term repercussions of it. But yeah, for example, what I'm doing here is super bad. But then again... We should be able to not kill the Montana, but do some damage to him. So we'll end up winning the game for sure. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much our death. And we should skip to the score screen. Alright, so for our second game, we ended up doing 169,000 damage. 437 shell hits, 2 kills, a cap. Team score, we ended up getting second place on the team right after our Louisiana. We'll compliment the Louisiana for playing so well. A detailed report. Um, we did 11k to the Venezia, 6k to the Vincent, and 86k on the Montana. Over 252 shell hits. Um, we did uh, 31k to the Hindenburg and some damage to the rest. 132,000 damage taken, which is really high again. Of course, you can take a lot of damage in this thing, especially with the quick cooldowns. But it's an XP. Um, here you go. Um, but for our commander, like I said before, I'm going to be running Lost Stand, Incoming Fire Alert, um, Consumables Enhancements, Adrenaline Rush, RPF, Concealment. Superintendent and Survivability Expert. And for equipment, I'm going to be running Main Battery Mod 3, Concealment System Mod 1, Prop Mod 1, Aiming System Mod 1, Surveillance Radar Mod 1, and Main Armaments Mod 1. And I'm going to, of course, be running the Hydro and the Radar. You can, of course, do this if you want. You can do this if you want. You can do this if you want. You can do pretty much whatever build you want. That's up to you. But this is the build I'll be running for this time. So the Sam Martin will be available for bundles, whatever, but later on it will be available for tech tree. Of course, I don't recommend you getting it in the bundles. Get it in the tech tree because it'll be available for free. If you're, of course, a giga billionaire in real life and you have infinite money to spend, guys, and you really want the Sam Martin on day one, go ahead and do whatever you want. Um, don't let me command you, of course. 
Um, you're richer than me. You can decide. You can do whatever the fuck you want with your own money. But I'm just giving you a recommendation because there's people who are, for example, maybe less less fortunate or maybe they have less money in their bank account or something and are not ready to spend money on the San Martin or they're going to spend money on the San Martin and not afford, for example, like fruits this week. Um, don't do that. Please wait till the San Martin comes out for free. If you're on a budget, guys, please, because these things cost a lot of money if you do want to get them day one. Um, but... Don't feel bad, like don't have a fear of missing out if you're not taking part in these early access events. Really and truly, um, you'll get them later on for free. It's what I always do. I always get them later on for free. So just do what I do, I guess, and get it later for free. <laughs> but yeah, guys, that's pretty much the video for the San Martin. Um, I hope you enjoyed the ship. Oh, sorry. I hope you enjoyed the video. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed my commentary in a way. Um, let me know if you have any further questions. Um, I will try my best to answer them in the comments. Maybe um, other commenters can help answer those questions. I would greatly appreciate it. On the last video of Illinois, there was a lot of replies to comments of questions, which I super enjoyed, guys. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. That is the San Martin. Um, do I recommend it? Since it's tech tree, I mean, there's no real giga downside to grinding it if you have some free time, of course, and you're not going to spend some money. Um, but otherwise, I mean, Wooster is pretty much a f fair uh, counterpart. I, I do love Wooster. And Minotaur is also fair as a counterpart. I think I also love Minotaur quite fairly. This one, I can't say it's completely bad because it's not that bad. I think it's definitely playable. I think it's main strength, like I said, guys. And I'm, I know I said this a hundred times in the video. But its main strength would be the consumable reload, right? The consumable reload is very quick, especially when you can get those shell hits, obviously. Um, only when you get those shell hits, actually. But still, it's very quick, which means you can tank more damage more often. You can sit in the open more often. You can get more radars more often. And you can use your hydro more often, which is super nice as a gimmick. I think it's super nice. And for the main downside of the ship, as I said a billion times, is its damage output. Now, of course, both games, we did 155k, 169k. Those were good games, of course. Well, they were decent games at best. Um, obviously, we're going to have games... Um, where we're gonna do more damage. We're gonna have some games. We're gonna do less damage But um, overall, I would say I prefer Wooster as a damage dealer and Minotaur as a damage dealer um, But this one can actually be pretty good as a mm, Semi light cruiser. It's a light cruiser, but it can tank uh, a bit more than other light cruisers So it has more sustain in a fight the problem comes when you're gonna be fighting angled cruisers angled battleships angled destroyers Broadside destroyers, they're all going to be pretty issues for you overall, but that's pretty much it. Um, so, at the end of it, do I recommend the San Martin? I think it could be a fun line for some of you to grind um, overall. Um, yeah, it could be pretty fun, I guess. Um, but it could also be a bit miserable for some of you guys, other other guys. Um, but So it's up to you at the end of the day if you want to grind it or not. Um, otherwise, if you enjoyed the video, guys, I would greatly, greatly appreciate a subscription to my channel, guys, a like on the video and a comment, because it will help the not only just the algorithm out, but it will also help me out as doing this as a full-time job, basically. Um, streaming and YouTube right now is my job. Obviously, I'm a student as well. I've said this a few times. I'm a student. I'm on my last year of my bachelor's. I'll be doing a master's next year, probably. Um, so, but currently, this is my job. Um... I do this as pretty much the whole the whole day almost, except obviously I have to study and do those other things and go to lectures. But this is my job. So giving me a subscription or a like or a comment might be a simple task for you guys. It doesn't like take a lot of time. But to me, it helps me out significantly. It just helps me out a lot, guys. I, I really thank you a lot for all the support you've given me throughout the years. Of course, we're up to 11,000 subscribers on YouTube, like almost 5,000 Discord members. And... 27,000 Twitch followers, which is huge, guys. So, yeah, if you haven't followed the Twitch, I would also appreciate it. And even I have made a new Instagram account, guys. I would appreciate the follow. But that's pretty much it, guys. And I'll see you in the next video. Um, and if you have any suggestions of what ship you want to see in the next video, do let me know in the comments below. But that's pretty much it. And I'll see you in the next video. Big fan.